So unless you've been living under a rock, you know that 2023 was the year of high interest rates. And with higher interest rates, real estate investors are having a really hard time finding anything that cash flows in today's market. So with the recent Fed meeting, there is actually a lot of speculation that interest rates are gonna be coming down towards the end of 2024. And so this is a really crucial piece of information because at the end of the day, lower mortgage rates indicates higher buyer demand, indicating higher home prices. So with that context, I'm leaning more towards the opinion that home prices are actually gonna trend upwards in 2024, as crazy as that might sound considering all the home appreciation that we've seen in the past three years already. So with that in mind, I wanted to share with you guys what my real estate investing strategy is for 2024. And by no means is this set in stone, but I think it's a really good strategy for Henry's, which are high earners, but not rich yet. But before we get into my strategy, I just wanna emphasize that this strategy is not for everyone, okay? Obviously, there's many ways to invest in real estate. There's very active ways to invest in real estate, like wholesaling or flipping. And then there's more passive ways of investing in real estate, like buy and hold or like syndications, for example. The way that you invest in real estate is really gonna to have to match up with your financial situation and your goals. So in order to determine if this strategy might suit you, I'm gonna be really transparent as to where I am financially and what my goals are. And if you're in a similar boat as me, meaning that you are also a Henry, perhaps you might find some value in this video. And please feel free to comment on this video if you think the strategy is good or if it's bad. I wanna get your guys' feedback on this plan. Again, it's not a perfect plan by any means. I'm just laying out my plan for all of you guys to see so that you guys can understand why I'm investing this way and how it gets me closer to my goals. Let's start with my financial picture. So so first off, my wife and I are gonna make roughly $500,000 in 2024. Again, I'm a software engineer, my wife's a real estate agent. Our total federal income tax bill is going to be roughly $110,000. So you can see that federal income taxes are a large expense. Actually, it's our biggest expense every single year. So the second thing to note is that my wife is actually a real estate professional. And if you don't know the significance of that, then you can go watch this video right here. To summarize in a few words, real estate professional status is a key component as to how we avoided over $130,000 in federal income tax between 2022 and 2023. And lastly, we own a total of four rental properties worth about $3.5 million in real estate, but our equity portion is closer to $750,000 to $800,000. Now, if we talk about our goals, we really just have two goals. The first one is to achieve a net worth of $5 million by the age of 35. And then secondly, we wanna produce $500,000 of passive income from our rental portfolio by the age of 35. So if you're in a similar boat as me, then keep watching and I'm gonna dive into my investing strategy for 2024. So the very first part of my investing strategy for 2024 is something called subject two. I have been yelling from the top of my lungs to you guys for the past few months about subject two. I think subject two is currently the best strategy to buy real estate in 2024. And so subject two is basically at the center of my investing strategy for 2024. And if you haven't been following, I just closed on a property with a blended interest rate of 2.3% on a $475,000 property in Texas this past November, so like last month. Not only is it cash flowing about $200 per month, I'm also paying down my loan balance at an insane rate because of this 2.3% interest rate. So if you want the full breakdown of how Subject 2 works or how I locked up that deal, then go watch this video right here. Now, the reason why Subject 2 is such an insane strategy and why it's such a big part of my strategy is because it offers three main benefits, okay? So number one is low down payment. I'm talking about 10% down or less. Because this is a creative financing method, I don't have to involve banks. I don't have to go get a conventional loan, which usually requires you to put 25% down. So I'm buying more real estate because I am taking on more leverage. And that usually is kind of more risky, but the good thing is, is that even with 10% down, these homes are still cash flowing. Now the second benefit that Subject2 offers is low interest rate. Obviously I'm buying homes at two point something percent interest rate. So that's pretty much the plan going into 2024. And thirdly, the main benefit of Subject2 is that because I'm getting such low interest rates, I can buy these homes for 10% down. And again, like I said, they are still cash flowing. So that's pretty much my entire acquisition strategy for 2024. That is how I'm gonna be buying all my rental properties in 2024. I'm gonna be using subject two. Now, the second part of my strategy for 2024 is utilizing real estate professional status 
and bonus depreciation. If you guys follow the channel, you guys already know that I talk about this all the time. So this might be a little bit repetitive, but just stick with me here, okay? So in 2024, when I file my tax return for 2023, I'm gonna be receiving a $60,000 tax return. And the primary reason why I'm saving $60,000 in taxes is because of real estate professional status and bonus depreciation on the two properties that I bought in 2023. So the $60,000 that we get from our tax return, we're gonna be using that cash, tacking on our savings from just our W-2 jobs and 1099 jobs, and we're gonna be using that to go buy subject to properties. And because I'm buying properties for only 10% down, I should be able to buy roughly in the ballpark of $2 million worth of rental real estate next year. So that equates to roughly $200,000 down. Again, this money is primarily coming from the $60,000 of tax savings from 2023, and then just the money that we save from our jobs. Now, assuming that we buy roughly four properties at $500,000 purchase price, that's gonna be roughly $2 million worth of real estate. We're gonna be claiming bonus depreciation on all four properties. And again, if you don't know what bonus depreciation is, please go watch this video because like, my entire investment strategy is revolved around this strategy right here. Now I'm gonna estimate here that once we buy that $2 million worth of real estate, we're gonna be able to claim roughly, okay, roughly $200,000 in passive losses in our real estate business for 2024. And again, this is really rough numbers, but you have to understand that bonus depreciation is going to be at 60% in 2024. And because my wife is a real estate professional and we're filing our taxes jointly, my wife and I will be able to use those $200,000 of losses against our W-2 and 1099 income, thus reducing our adjusted gross income by $200,000. So effectively what that means is instead of reporting to the IRS that we made $500,000, we'll now be reporting that we only made $300,000. So instead of paying $110,000 of federal income tax to the IRS because we reported that we made $500,000, now we report that we only made $300,000. And because of that, we're only gonna be paying $52,000 in federal income tax for 2024. And that is a savings of $58,000. So if you think about it, we'll have spent $200,000 on rental properties in 2024, but because of the $200,000 that we spent, we're going to be saving $58,000 in federal income tax savings. And we're literally gonna get that money back when we file our tax return in 2025. So to me at least, that means that we're buying $2 million worth of real estate for just $142,000 after you consider the tax savings. So let's do some quick math here. If the four properties can cash flow about $300 per month or so, that's roughly $1,200 per month. So let's calculate what the cash on cash return is for this $142,000 investment. Well, if you're profiting $1,200 per month for 12 months, that's roughly $14,000 per year. Our total cash invested, if you consider the tax savings, is $142,000. So that means our cash on cash return is roughly 9.8% per year. But to be honest, this number doesn't really mean that much to me because everybody knows that there's more costs that I'm not factoring in here, like vacancies, repairs, and such. Now, the reason why I'm not too concerned about this cash on cash percentage is because you make money in different ways when you buy a rental property. Especially when you're buying rental properties with 2% interest rates, a lot of your wealth is gonna come through loan pay down. Now, what I mean by that is for each $500,000 property, which I'm putting 10% down for, at a 2.5% interest rate, the tenant will be paying down about $10,000 off my loan principal balance every single year. So the way I see it is this, for the four properties that I'm purchasing this way, I'll be paying off roughly $40,000 off my loan principal balance every single year. And that number is just going to increase year over year. So if you factor in that $40,000 of loan pay down every single year, your cash on cash return just skyrockets. So even if the cash flow is negligible, I have to realize that I'm building significant equity in just the loan pay down every single year because my tenants are paying down the loan for me. And just to put a cherry on the top of all of that, again, I mentioned that you know at the beginning of this video that I'm leaning towards the opinion that home prices are gonna trend upwards in 2024. So if that happens, my now $3.9 million worth of real estate could potentially pre as well. Now the third part of my strategy involves repositioning equity. So right now one of my rental properties in the Bay Area has roughly $400,000 of equity sitting in it and I'm only collecting $3,700 of rent from that one property. So the home has appreciated quite a bit since I bought it and I'm thinking that if I sell it I could take the $400,000 
split it up and buy more subject to deal. With $400,000, I could potentially go buy eight more subject to deals, assuming that I put $50,000 down on every single property. Now, some of you guys might be thinking, well, you're gonna have to pay capital gains tax, plus you're gonna have to pay depreciation recapture because I already claimed bonus depreciation on my Bay Area home. Well, actually, if I were to sell the property, this Bay Area home, and buy eight more subject to homes in the same calendar year, I should be able to use the passive losses that I generate from these eight new homes to offset the capital gains tax plus the depreciation recapture from the sale of this Bay Area home. So another thing I'm thinking is that I might just consolidate at this point, and when I sell this Bay Area home, instead of buying eight single family homes, which is a lot to manage, maybe I will consolidate and just go buy one $4 million multifamily apartment complex out of state, and then again, bonus depreciate it, use all of the passive losses to offset the capital gains, and the depreciation we captured from the sale of this Bay Area home. So that's currently what's on my mind for 2024, but I wanna emphasize one main point here. If you're looking to grow your net worth, your income is by far the biggest factor that's gonna allow you to reach those financial goals. So although this video is about my investing strategy, my investing plan for 2024, I didn't mention the fact that I am spending more time thinking about increasing my income for 2024 than I am thinking about investing. Because at the end of the day, guys, you have to realize this, okay? The guy making $1 million per year who does zero investing is gonna reach his financial goals faster than the person making $300,000 who invests all their money. So although this is my investing plan for 2024, I want you guys to realize that I have a separate plan for how to build my income in 2024. It's like two separate things. And I would argue that your income plan is probably more important than your investing plan. So if you guys want a video on my income plan for 2024, then let me know in the comments below. And lastly, if you guys wanna learn more about real estate investing and how it can grow your net worth, then consider subscribing to this channel because I make videos like this all the time. Anyways, guys, thank you guys for watching. Happy holidays and happy new year, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out, guys.